election related. You can call in with your questions about the election, maybe a particular candidate you want to ask about, maybe a particular topic you want to discuss. 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. Give us a call now. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. For those of you new to the program, it's a legal call-in show where you call in every week with your legal questions, and we discuss various topics that I want to in between your calls, and your calls are the heartbeat of the show. So feel free to give us a call now, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. To kick off our election special, I want to start by discussing the amendments that are on the ballot. These are the proposed constitutional amendments. To the Florida State Constitution, we have three up this year. Uh, the first is the limited assessment on a real property used for residential purposes. Now, the heartbeat of Amendment 1 basically is addressing parties who do flood-resistant improvements to their properties and not allowing the property value to be reassessed when the nature of the improvement is such that it is essentially to address potential flood issues. This is, of course, on everyone's mind after uh, in the wake of Hurricane Ian. Everyone is thinking about ways to prevent and stay safe from flooding and things of that nature. So uh, Amendment 1 addressing not allowing the reassessment of property value if the improvement made was for flood resistance. Amendment 2 is abolishing the Constitution Revision Commission, which meets every 20 years and is due to meet next in uh, 2037, it's made up of 37 members, uh, mostly appointed by the governor and then some members of the legislature and the Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice, uh, the Florida State Supreme Court Chief Justice. And basically, this is another avenue in addition to legislative changes to Florida State Constitution and, uh, of course, citizen petition drives. So uh, this amendment passing would abolish the Constitution Revision Commission and take away one of our avenues for amending the Florida State Constitution. And lastly, but not least, Amendment 3 is giving an additional $50,000 exemption on homestead protection for those in certain public services. So for those who are workers in certain fields of public service, like first responders and things of that nature, uh, could potentially get an additional homestead exemption of up to $50,000, which le would lead to a potential deficit in our budget, but they are saying that there are proposed measures in place to make up that deficit. So those are your three amendments. And by the way, this is the 20th anniversary. For those of you who were in Florida in 2002, when the famous pig amendment passed, do you remember the pig amendment? I'm looking in the production booth. The pig amendment was passed in 2002 and it regulated the size of trailer or stall that pigs were allowed to be in. They had to be large enough so that the pig could turn. I mean, this is from 20 years ago. Do you not remember that? So, so 20 years ago, there was an amendment on the ballot. This is kind of, it speaks to the point about how easy it is to amend the state constitution. And I think that's where the, I say that to say this, that's where amendment two is coming from in this year's ballot. Amendment two is abolishing the Constitution Revision Commission, I think, in an effort to stop Florida's state constitution from looking so much like a phone book and, and getting amended so frequently. But I think at the end of the day, people having the right to amend their constitution, be it about pigs or whatever, it's the people's right to amend the constitution. So 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. want to go to our very first and very special guest. Uh, joining us now live is Congressman Dan Webster. Congressman, welcome to the show. Did we lose him? Oh, we just lost him. So we'll get Dan back. 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Nine six seven three. You can give us a call now, live and local. We're happy to help any way that we can. So the amendment process in Florida, uh, we were talking about that, and a lot of people are confused. I get calls at the office all the time from clients saying, "Patrick, walk me through what these amendments say and don't say." And a lot of people are very confused about the way they're worded. This year, not so much. Not as many calls coming in from clients this year, and also a lot of people this year sort of able to parse through the language because the amendments are pretty simple and straightforward. But maybe you have a question about one of them. 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. And this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. So, all right, take two. Congressman Webster, are you there? I'm here. Good morning. How are you, Congressman? Good morning. 
Very good. Well, thank you for joining us on the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. We really appreciate you. For those of you not familiar with Congressman Webster, he is the congressman for Florida's 11th district and has uh, proudly served the 11th district since 2017. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, that number I've served in, I've been in Congress since 2010. And you currently serve representing the 11th district. And uh, Congressman Webster, I guess one of my favorite things about you is the fact that you're what I regard as one of the last remaining sort of Reagan Republicans. Because when I think of a Reagan Republican, I think of someone who's very fiscally conservative. And I know that you personally, uh, as part of uh, your service to our nation as a congressman, actually donate back part of your salary as a congressman and part of your office budget. So maybe you can speak to why it is so important to you to be a fiscal conservative. Well, uh, if you look at our four points that we've committed to the American people, if we were to gain majority, we would take over. One of those is the first one is, uh, is just the fact that we want an economy that's strong. And there's no way we can build an economy that's not inflation ridden and all of that without cutting government waste, cutting spending. And so I'm, and it's been that way since I got elected a long time ago. So I, I feel it's a, an important thing. It's the, uh, the one thing I could do would be to take back the money I have and give some of it back to the country. Well, and it's one of those things where you're literally, you know, putting your money where, where your mouth is. And it's one of those things that speaks loudly because the actions speak loudest. Now, you're actively out there on the campaign trail, currently campaigning there in the 11th district for Florida. What can you tell us about what you're seeing from the uh, citizenry out there as you're on the campaign trail? Uh, really no different than what you're hearing uh, from these polling done by every news agency there is. Uh, that the economy, a strong economy, and inflation and the price of goods is really uh, the big issue. The number one issue is not the only issue, but it's the number one issue. And so the idea of cutting waste or... or uh, increasing take-home pay by lowering the the price of ground. Housing, uh, and the fact that the more we spend, uh, we think somehow some people have decided that's the way to to uh, to uh, get inflation under control. <laughs> that's the way to it gets it does something to it, but it's not getting it under control. Now, oftentimes during these sort of periods where the economy takes a downward turn, we often see other issues like the environment and education sort of getting pushed to the back burner. Are you seeing that at all in Congress right now, or do you see the same concern and attention towards education and environment during these rough economic times? Well, it's not that people aren't concerned. It's just that if you're talking about the number one, and that's what they're asked about, it's the economy. And I think it's, it's taken uh, first place. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Congressman Webster, we really appreciate you taking time to be on the show today and uh, encourage everyone to get out and vote. And uh, Congressman Webster, you've got our vote and we appreciate all you do for Florida up in Washington. Fantastic. Good being on. Nice to talk to you and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you, Congressman. Have a great day. All right. You too. All righty. Goodbye. All righty. That was Congressman Dan Webster, Florida's 11th District, 877-943-9673. Give us a call. Be part of the show. And we want to talk to you. So 877-943-9673. So Congressman Webster, our first guest of the day. We've got our next guest. Our second guest of the day is Scott Levinson. Scott, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Well, good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, Scott, I'm doing better than I deserve. So why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners, tell them who you are and what you're running for. Well, as said, my name is Scott Levinson, and I am running for Hillsborough County District 1 Commissioner. Tell, and us, tell us why. So running for public office is one of those things where you've really crossed the Rubicon. Why would you subject yourself to that scrutiny? I I was dropped on my head a lot as a child. <laughs> um, That's an honest answer, Scott. That's going to score you some votes right there. There you go. There you go. No, I, um, I've lived in Tampa my whole life. I've lived in Hillsborough County. In fact, I've actually lived in District 1 my entire life. 
And the it, it, it's one of those things. I spent 30 years working with children and families, mostly minority, um, not as privileged, and running the Tampa Bay Youth Football League, and and we worked with football, cheer, education, not only with the p- children but also with the parents, and. Um, over the years working and, you know, you're fighting back and forth with the county, you need fields, you need, you need support. Um, and over the years, you realize that the county's not working and things aren't working the way they should. It's always the same excuse. We don't have the resources. We don't have the money. And then you start to realize they don't have resources or money for maybe what you need, but they always seem to find it for their pet projects. So let me ask you this. So, Scott, you're elected, you're county commissioner, day one on the job. Your top agenda is what? Number number one on the agenda item is what? My top uh, item on the agenda, well, it's twofold. First, there's three things that are a must we need access we need accountability and more so, more than anything we need transparency but my first thing and one of the things i find most important is like i said there's a lot of needs in this county my first day on the job is look at the budget and understand we have more money coming in than ever before and it's time to properly prioritize where we spend our money. All righty, guys. This is candidate for Hillsborough County Commission District 1, Scott Levinson. And if you want to learn more about Scott, you can visit his website at votelevinson.com. Scott, we really appreciate you making time to be on the show today. Brother, I appreciate it, and thank you very much, and I hope everyone gets out and votes. Thank you, sir. Have a great day, and good luck on Tuesday. Thank you. All righty. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, and I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. That was our second guest, Scott Levinson, Hillsborough County Commission candidate for District 1, and we kicked off the show with my friend, your favorite, Congressman Dan Webster from Florida's 11th District. We've got some other guests lined up here, but if you want to be part of the show, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Right, let's go to our first call of the day. Let's go to John and Holiday. John, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Yeah, good morning to you. Um, can you tell me, please, is there is a difference between not irrevocable and revocable? Yes, there is a difference. Okay. Can you tell me what it is then, please? So revocable trusts are changeable. You're able to make modifications to them in some fashion. Irrevocable trusts, at least in part, if not entirely, are unchangeable. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sorry. I think you I think you missed the first word I said. Um, the difference between not I've got I've got a document from a charity and it says not irrevocable. So that's a double blah, blah, neg- blah. Yeah, that's essentially a double <laughs> negative. Not irrevocable would be revocable or revocable. Okay. I'm just wondering why they would put not irrevocable. Uh, just revocable. My guess would be someone in their legal department board one day and said, you know what, we're going to change it up a little bit. And we're going to instead, instead of saying revocable, let's go use the double negative and say not irrevocable. <laughs> just to throw everybody, <laughs> okay. like they were probably thinking, hey, there's this guy, John and Holiday, and this way we can really confuse John. But joke's on them because it led to a great <laughs> call on my show. So thanks for doing it, John. Yeah, I thought I thought they were the same thing, but I just wanted to check. With, no, you with, did the right thing by calling an attorney to get clarification on that, and and it really is interesting that they phrased it that way. So, uh, yeah, if yeah. you if you have a chance, uh, call the office this week. I'll give out the office number here. I'd love to take a look at that paperwork and see exactly okay. if there is a some sort of unique reason why they specifically said not irrevocable. And the only thing I can think of is a lot of people do in their minds get revocable and irrevocable confused. So maybe it was just a way to bring mm-hmm. attention to it so that you would have to really mm-hmm. hone in on it so that you don't get confused. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll call you, I'll call you office then. Many thanks. I appreciate it. John, thanks thank for so calling much. in. Have a great day, okay? Yes, you too.
All right, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. And before we go to our next guest, uh, let's go talk to Ruth in my home county of Polk, who's in beautiful Haines City. Ruth, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Thank you. I have a question for you about a trust. Go ahead, Ruth. I, I, okay, I have a trust, Okay. My question is, okay, my main checking account is not in the name of the trust. And I do have a signer, okay, on my checking account, okay, that will not be like an executor on the trust. What should I do? I think that all of your standard operating accounts, banking, checking, savings, money markets, CDs, should be titled into the name of the trust. Because I think in a perfect world, you want one captain of that ship. When the time comes, I think the risk you run with a signer on the account who's different from your trustee, you've now got two captains and there could possibly be disputing forces. So why do you have someone who's not the administrator of your estate designated as the signer on the account? Do you mind answering that? Because she was close. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the executors that are on the trust, I mean, which are my children. Okay, they're they're in different states, and I thought, you know, it would be good if I got sick or something, if she could go ahead and she could do a check or whatever needed to be done. And she is my granddaughter. So, so I'm guessing you did this before you had the trust. Is that correct? No, 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 I didn't. Oh, so did, yeah, did the I bank... didn't. I should have called you. I should have called you. I went to the bank and I said, "How can I get somebody off my checking account?" And the bank took said, the easy way out. They said, "Just put her on as a signer because they didn't want to do the paperwork to put the trust accounts together." Oh, Ruth, well, I see this all but the time. Now, yeah, but now, okay, I go to the bank and I say, "You know, um, how can I take her off as a signer?" And they said only by death. And it's like, I have to open up another checking account, according to them. Okay, close that one out. And so I can put it in the name of the trust. Only by death? Yeah, that's they, what they told me. They told you that to change the signer on your bank account required some, like a, a blood sacrifice, basically. Well, basically, yeah, it's my granddaughter, okay? And like I said, if I said, well, how can I get her off of there? Because she would sign whatever papers to come off, you know. I, and I they, think I think you may just need don't say which bank it is. I don't want that going out over the air, but I think <laughs> that you may just need a different banking relationship, but it I've seen this from time to time where clients go in to set up a trust and bank employees like to get out their Google law degrees and give advice. And and, mm -hmm. and and banking advice is good. I appreciate a good bank employee who gives good banking advice. What I don't appreciate is when they try to play lawyer and tell people how to not use the trust and the legal documents that we've crafted for our clients because they don't want to do the work, the paperwork on their end. So yeah, I think it's worth the time and effort to go back to that bank, Ruth, or switch to a different bank. And if you want some banking recommendations, call me. I'll give you some that I work with who are absolutely fantastic. And they'll streamline the okay. process of getting everything established in the name of your trust. Okay. Now I do have another, another question. Okay. On the trust. Okay. Now my car. Okay. It's in my name. Should that be in the name of the trust? It's 50-50. Some clients do, some clients don't. I think that if you put it in the trust, the good news is the automobile is going to avoid probate. The bad news, I think, there, if you put the car in the trust and the car is in an accident, what do you think happens? Well, that's what when my, my next question was going to be. Would the, would the executors, the people on the trust, would there be a liability to them? Not directly to them, but to the estate, to your assets, they could be exposed to that potential liability. Okay. That's why I'm a big fan okay. of sitting down with your financial advisor and saying, let's talk about maxing out my home auto and umbrella coverage and getting good uninsured and underinsured riders to those. So sit down with your financial professional. Again, if you don't have one of those, call me at the office. I'll give you two or three names that you can interview. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do. What is your office number, please? 877 754 six seven six four i'll give it out one more time in case john was listening because he wanted okay. to write it down to eight seven 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 five four six seven six four okay do you still have an office in davenport florida no we're a little further south now we're actually in haines city uh right on the haines city winter haven line right there at 544 and 27. oh you are you do have an office there yes ma'am we got a little courtesy office there there in the uh, south state bank building 
Oh, great. Okay. Well, I will be calling for an appointment. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Ruth. Have a great Saturday. Okay. Uh huh. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. 877 943 9673. 877 943 9673. That's your live and local number to be part of the show. And again, to reach me during the week if you want to schedule an appointment at our uh, Haines City office or Sarasota, Clearwater, any of the offices in Lake County, Claremont, the villages, it's one toll free number to call to schedule your appointment. 877 754 6764. 877-754-6764 877-754-6764 or visit the website attorneypatricksmith.com and we'll be happy to have you book your appointment through the website attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go to Tampa and let's talk to Steve. Steve, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Oh, good morning. Hey, Steve. You, I'm on my way to Tampa as we speak. Uh, I'm actually headed to the plant city, but I have a question about Amendment 3. Go ahead. Um, and I am a retired uh, firefighter, did 29 years in Pinellas County, uh, military prior to that. And in Amendment 3, they're offering uh, an extra 50000 homestead exemption for military, but I, I believe that we passed that a couple of years ago for disabled military. Am I right on that or wrong on that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think that's a, I'm not sure if that's a constitutional amendment that passed, but I, I think you're speaking to the one that allows for a hundred percent exemption for disabled vets. Or for property tax. You're right. For ad valorem property taxes. That's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the other part of the question is, um, how, and it's a broad spectrum of the people that they're covering, including uh, social workers in certain positions and stuff, which I understand it's a tough work. And being retired, uh, I, I get it, but how will they know, like, how would they know that I'm retired? You know, let's say that I was still working, applied for this, and then retired. Would this just go on forever that I would get this exception? It's as it's currently drafted. It sounds like it. It doesn't sound like there's any sort of sunset or uh, that's a great question. How do you police that? I don't know. That's yeah. a fantastic yeah. question, though, Steve. I tried to find out from the election office in Manatee County where I live that they sent me to the RNC and I asked them. And they just told me what their recommendation was. And, and I made my decision on what their recommendation was. Well, Steve, if um, I'm going to hang up with you, and then I'm going to go to someone who I think can give us a little better information about that answer, uh, specifically with regard to Manatee County. Yeah, and I'm just thinking, this: how will they know? <laughs> Sounds like it's going on forever. All righty, Steve. Well, uh, you have a great Saturday, and you said you're headed to a speaking engagement, so break a leg, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Steve. Yep, bye-bye. All right, you listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, to be part of the show, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Speaking of Manatee County, let's go to Mayor Gene Brown of Bradenton, Florida. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, and how are you this morning? I'm doing just fine, Mayor Brown. How is everything down in Bradenton today? Good. I'm actually at uh, our fairgrounds at a stand down for veterans today, which probably a couple hundred volunteers are out to help our homeless veterans through our turning points and really try to give them some services to make things better. So talking about veterans as we just were, you know, anything we can do to help that generations have served us to make our country what it is, is very important. I love that. My father, grandfather, great-grandfather, all veterans of this great nation of ours. So I feel like it is the uh, one of the great shames of our nation how uh, poorly we take care of our veterans from time to time. So I love to hear folks like you, Mayor Brown, doing the work to make sure these veterans feel appreciated and cared for and know they're not forgotten and their sacrifices meant something. So first of all, thank you for doing that. And, uh, and you heard Steve's call. Uh, right. I, so about amendment three and whether or not it is sort of their a way to police sort of this person's work status. Can you speak to that? Do you have any knowledge on how the amendment would address that? Well, probably not directly, but I, I do believe the way it's set up is that once you do qualify and you, you, you know, get the proper documentation to show you qualify, it's until 
you know, for your homestead exemption as long as you own that home. And, you know, most times in Florida, when things are portable, if you sell, as long, you know, you're always a veteran. You know, that's never going to change, obviously. So, you know, we're always going to be there trying to help. But specifics, a lot of times the specifics on the bills kind of roll into as they go. But I believe this goes on as long as, you know, you have that. And, and you know, obviously through the IRS, they know when you're working or not. So there will be ways to, to check. But I do believe it's, it's something that's going to be a great bill that will help our veterans to, you know, try to get home ownership and and the most important thing of for anybody and especially our veterans is home ownership and anytime we can help with that that's important well so i guess that's the point it's about helping those who help us and i think that that's a great idea and it's a wonderful thing and i think that my concern is sort of what i was reading up from the league of women voters website uh to get an idea of those who are opponents to this, what they were mm-hmm. thinking. And the big thing, it's not a small concern in my mind too. How do we make up the deficit? So we give right. them this and it leads to like a, what is it? An $85 uh, billion dollar deficit in right. the budget. How do we make up that deficit? Well, and when you look at the overall, it, it doesn't affect just the state only. It affects the local municipalities, the local counties, because that's what we're doing. But just like the event I'm at today, if we're not trying to help our veterans get better, what do we do? Because they put their lives on the line. And that's, that's what you've got to try to look at. And again, you know, sometimes you, as in government, you've got to look at dollars and cents and make some tough decisions. But sometimes in life, we have to look at those who have helped us and now turn around and try to help them. But if you can get a veteran home ownership, and because this could make the difference of a veteran getting a home to own. And so, you know, you think about it when you're going for a mortgage, anybody, sometimes the pennies count and this could make that difference. And so I think as a government official, you know, I'm not for for new taxes or anything, but I'm the type of person that says, hey, when you can help somebody, the help will come back to you. Well, and I think, Mayor Brown, what sold me on Amendment 3 was Mm -hmm. the fact that when you sort of extrapolated across the state running a pro forma on its performance as if it was in place, the counties benefited most from this are the 29 right. poorest counties in the state, the more more rural counties up in the Panhandle and some down right. in South Florida. They're going to see the biggest benefit from this. And I think that's what really sold me on it, because right. even though it produces a deficit at the government level, that I can deal with that if it's going to help out sit who are dealing with very real deficits in their lives. I'm OK with the government coming up a little short if it's going to help the citizens have a little more money in their pockets. Right. And again, it goes back to you're going to help the ones that could help the, that need to help the most at this moment that helped us at the crucial times in our, our country's history. And we will be there. And, you know, not that I, I don't see this having to raise taxes because I think there's other avenues of government does it the right way. And government can never be totally business but we can be business-like more and try to make smarter decisions in helping others. Well, there you go, Steve, from the horse's mouth, Mayor Gene Brown. Mayor, thank you so much for making time to be on the show today. We really appreciate it. Yes, sir, and thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Have a great day. All righty, this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. To be part of the show today, 877-943-9673. This is our election special. We kicked off the show with Congressman Dan Webster from Florida's 11th District, and then we went on to talk to Scott Levinson, who's the Hillsborough County Commission District 1 candidate. And then that was Mayor Gene Brown of Bradenton, Florida, down in Manatee County. And next, we're going to talk to Representative Tom Fabrizio, from District 103. Tom, are you there? Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to have you, Tom. And uh, tell us a little bit about sort of District 103, where that entails and uh, sort of your responsibility within the state. Sure. So I'm a member of the Florida House of Representatives. Uh, For the last two years, I've served House District 103, which was in Southwest Broward and Northwest Miami-Dade County. However, after uh, the redistricting that we just had, uh, this last session. Uh, my new district number is District 110, and that is just northwest Miami-Dade County, and it includes the north end of the city of Hialeah and all of the town of Miami Lake. All right, great. So you're currently uh, running, you're up for election on Tuesday? So uh, I'm blessed 
in that I either didn't do enough so I didn't make any noise or we did really well and the community loves me because I didn't catch an opponent oh, either. Oh, you're one of the lucky ones. Right. I, I didn't have a primary opponent and I didn't have a general opponent. So yeah. I've, I've been blessed with the opportunity to go out and help other candidates throughout the state. I've been able to support our great governor, Ron DeSantis and Jan- Jeanette Nunez. Uh, as well as many members of Congress that are running to uh, keep uh, their conservative seats. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to help the governor keep Florida free. I would like to help keep Ron here. That's my fear is that uh, we're, we may lose our governor. Uh, and I because I, th- I couldn't agree more with you, Tom. I think he's doing an amazing job as a governor for the great state of Florida. And I almost wonder if it's too good of a job and he's going to be tapped for another one if you get my drift. I, I do, and, and what I'll tell you, uh, very honestly, I've, I've had this question uh, from several outlets, and, you know, I, you know in sports, I, I'm an attorney, I, I try one case at a time, I try cases at one level at a time, and in sports, I, I tell the, the folks that I mentor, we're playing one game at a time. Right. So right now, the, the, the task at hand is really we want to make sure that voters throughout the state get out and vote. Uh, we've had very good Republican turnout uh, throughout the state. But we want to make sure that the, the Republican conservative uh, voters go out there and you know, and cast their ballots and support the, the, the right conservative Republican candidates. Uh, over the last two years, while, while I've served in the House, uh, we've been able to get wonderful conservative policy done and, and enacted into law. And, uh, and the governor has been doing that for four years. The governor's response to the hurricane was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, he is. Florida's governor. He's America's governor. So we, we really want to make sure that we get the voters to go out and support his uh, his candidacy. Well, hey, and when you're up there in Tallahassee, there's going to be a new, a potentially new state senator by the name of Jonathan Martin walking around. Yes, and sir. He's the best man for my wedding. So keep an eye on him for me, will you? No, we're very excited to see him come up to Tallahassee. And uh, he certainly was uh, supported by the governor. And, uh, you know, we, uh, he will be welcomed into the chamber uh, with open arms. Yeah, I had a great call when he, Jonathan called me and told me he was he was running. He said the governor called and asked if I wanted to run for the seat. I said, what'd you say? He goes, I said, yes. And I said, why'd you say that? He goes, because I thought if I said no, that might be the last call I get from the governor. <laughs> and I said, I doubt that's the case. But I said, that's a really funny response. But anyway, uh, Tom, congr- congratulations, of course, on the uh, the early win and not running unopposed. You must be doing a heck of a job. Your constituents must love you. And so that's a commentary on your performance. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'm actually right now driving from Miami-Dade County up to uh, St. Cloud to help my dear friend Fred Hawkins and to help bring them across the finish line up there. All right. So uh, it's, uh, it's important to get conservatives to come out and vote. Everyone Thank get you out so and much. vote. Absolutely. Tom, have a great day, okay? You too. Bye-bye. All right. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673. I'm Attorney Patrick Smith. Let's go to Laura in Sarasota. Laura, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hello. I have a question. Um, how can I tell if my mother has a springing POA or a permanent POA? So the springing POA will have a clause in it that says it's only triggered by some event occurring, typically mom's incapacitation. Those power of attorneys have not been permitted in Florida as of October 1st of 2011. So the short version is just have a good attorney review it. They'll tell you what they think of it, okay? Yeah, because that's back from 2003, so I'm sure it's the old one. All righty. Well, Laura, we appreciate you calling in. We'll be happy. I'll give out the office number here again before the end of the show so you can call and schedule an appointment there in the Sarasota office. We'll be happy to take a look at it with you, okay? Um, I do have another quick question, if you don't mind. Sure. What is the difference between a successor trustee notice, a letter of acceptance of trustee, and a certificate of trust? So a certificate of trust outlays the key terms of the trust, who's in charge, the trust being in full effect, the trust title, who the grantors were, all those key points of the trust. A successor trustee notice is how the successor trustee is notified that they're nominated for the position. And then the acceptance of trustee is that nominee's acknowledgement that they've accepted the role. Okay. All righty, Laura. Yep, that is. All righty, you have a great Saturday, okay? All righty, this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673. And that office line, before we go to our guest, our office line again, 877 754-6764 to schedule your appointment, Laura, there in Sarasota or any of the other office locations. That office line, toll-free, 877- 
754-6764 or again visit the website attorneypatricksmith.com next we are going to go to former pasco county commissioner mike moore mike thanks for joining us on the show we appreciate it how are you this saturday patrick good morning it's a great day here in pasco county and happy to be on your show well thank you and now i understand you're a local small business owner is that correct Yes, I, I was a local small business owner for quite a bit of time. Um, I decided to retire from the county commission. So this is my last term. I, I actually have about three weeks left. Um, but I was a um, small business owner for uh, for a number of years before uh, coming to office. Oh, this is wonderful. So we've got new candidates getting elected. We've got candidates retiring from office. So, Mike, uh, during your time in office, the biggest changes that you've seen up in Pasco County? Well, as you probably know, Paso County is one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Florida, if not the entire nation right now. So the growth here is exponential. I mean, we've seen, um, you know, more, obviously, housing developments, master plan communities. Tourism is actually booming here in Paso County right now because of our rebranded to Florida Sports Coast. So we have a number of assets here in the county that are bringing people from all over the nation to come to, to Pasco County for, to play amateur sports, basketball, wrestling, cheerleading. You name it, we have it here. Um, infrastructure, you know, we have new interchanges that are coming to Paso County that don't only benefit the citizens here, but are going to benefit people all over the state of Florida, especially at Traverse um, 75. Uh, we've done great things when it comes to public safety and law enforcement. I could go on and on, but this is just a great county. I, I love this county. I've enjoyed my eight years um, as being a county commissioner. I'm a little old school. Um, you know, I feel that you go into office, you serve, when you feel you've, you've, you're fulfilled, if you've accomplished things, mm -hmm. you go back to the real world again. So that's what I'm doing. I fell in love all over again with Pasco County when they were on a show called Live PD. I don't know if you remember those days when Live PD I, I, I do remember those days. <laughs> and, and I fell in love particularly with one of the canine officers, Canine Shep. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll never, do you know Shep? Oh, yeah. And Deputy Carmichael, uh, his, his yeah. handler, uh, one of my favorites, that dog and all the canine officers out there, absolutely amazing. So uh, the police force up there, Pasco County, uh, it, it's uh, so amazing. And then I was recently at uh, one of their uh, wild game dinners. Have you ever attended? Oh, you did? Okay. Okay. So you were there too. I figured, Mike. You... I, I, I missed this past one, but I typically go. It, yes. th that was just I've never seen anything like it. That was just such an experience uh, to to get a go. Uh, attorney Matthew Kendall, the criminal defense attorney I work with, mm -hmm. practices up there. And he's like, hey, I got this event and I've never. So we're going to go and check it out and loved it. So Pasco County, an amazing county. Mike, on your way out, any parting words for your citizens up there in Pasco County? Well, I, I will say this. You know, I, I've loved serving. Um, again, it's, it's been an honor to serve the citizens of Pasco County. Um, Again, I'm always going to be there for people, but I will, I will, I will end with this, though, too. We're talking about elections today, and I, and I loved hearing Congressman, Congressman Webster. He's, a, he's an amazing, amazing gentleman. Um, so advice for our candidates over the last few days that are, that are still stumping is knock on doors, knock on doors, knock on doors. That's what you need to be doing the next three days. Hit those super voters. Hit those likely voters because, you know, some of these things can come down to one single vote, as you well know, Patrick. Oh, yeah. So, Get out there. Don't stop working until it ends. You know, and I, you know, I, I think I don't think I know what we're going to see in this election cycle. We're going to see a wet red wave come through the state of Florida. I it's going to be more of a tsunami that's going to come through the state of Florida. Couldn't agree so, more with that, Mike. Mike, we appreciate you taking time. And again, thank you for your years of service to Pasco County. And if you, you see Shep up there, you say hi for me. OK, thanks, Patrick. Take care. All right. Bye bye. All right. Listen to the attorney Patrick Smith show 877-943-9673 to be part of the show. 877-943-9673. This is our election special of the attorney Patrick Smith show. And again, we kicked off with Congressman Dan Webster from Florida's 11th district. Then Scott Levinson, who was the candidate for District 1 for Hillsborough County Commission. Mayor Gene Brown of Bradenton followed up Scott. And that was uh, Mike Moore, former or soon to be former Pasco County Commissioner. So next we're going to go to Port Charlotte and we're going to talk to Frank. Frank, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning. Hey, Good question. Go ahead. The first one is a follow up to that woman who was speaking about putting a car in a trust. But I understand in the state of Florida, a car is the only thing that can pass without probate and just a will. 
Is that true? It depends. So if it's passing to a spouse, some counties will allow you to transfer that because it's an exempt item. But it depends on to whom it's passing, Frank. That's not uniform in general for cars. It's, it's really a product on is the account, is the asset, the automobile exempt under the statute? And that's dependent upon to whom the car is being bequested. Children, children count? It depends on the nature of the relationship with the child. If the child's a dependent or if it's a, a, like a healthy adult child, th that can change the facts. Okay, second question. For a property that's in a trust, like a house, if people inherit the property, they inherit it at its current market value. So if they sell it, they don't pay capital gains tax. Is there any difference if the trust sells the property and then gives the cash to the beneficiary? Will the trust be paying capital gains tax? The trust would receive the same basis adjustment. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, Great answer. I mean, I, I would double check with an accountant on that. Anything income tax related, I always, you know, Dwayne Bischoff, the CPA who's been here, I guess, on the Attorney Patrick Smith show before. But any good CPA would be able to just sort of, sort of put a pin in that one just to make sure they follow up. But my understanding based on conversations with them is, yes, the trust would receive the same step up in basis. And I've been doing it for a long time, and I've never heard of a situation where that wasn't the case. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. All right, this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673, our election special, 877-943-9673. You can visit our website, attorneypatricksmith.com, or just give us a call now, 877-943-9673. All right, let's go to beautiful Clearwater, Florida, and talk to Marty. Marty, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Happy to do it, Marty. I have uh, all, all of my assets in a trust. The trust uh, names uh, all of my children and other beneficiaries. I would like to put my adult daughter on my on my bank account and and on the trust, naming her as. as a uh, as a individual who has the right to operate the uh, my assets. Marty, when was the last time you sat down with an estate planning attorney to review your existing documents? Oh, about two years ago. All right. So either call that attorney back and go and have a review, or if you want to sit down and meet with me, you're welcome to do so. So just give the office a call, and I'll give out the office number here before the show. It sounds like it's probably just going to be an amendment to your existing trust that will allow you to accomplish your goal, okay? Well, it, 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 I think it's le less complicated than that. Uh, I notified the... Uh, company that uh, uh, that I have a trust and I want to add my daughter to give her the uh, legal right to act in my name for the sale of property, for the sale of stocks and bonds, paying bills, and to, to put on her as a all right. Well, if they if they said you're all set, Marty, then you're all set. But if you change your mind and decide you want to sit down with your attorney, just give them a call. Or if you want to sit down with us, give us a call. We'll be happy to help. Okay. Well, I filled out a power of attorney form, and she did as well. Yeah, the power of attorney will work, but the power of attorney doesn't give her any authority under the trust. To do that, you, you might potentially have to modify the trust. That's why I'm sitting having that trust reviewed. I'm gonna uh, let you go because okay. I have to get to my last guest for the show. Okay. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Marty. Have a great day. All righty, this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673 to be part of our show. Now let's go to our last but not, certainly not least guest, Dr. David Hill. Good morning, David. Good morning, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing great. Dr. David Hill, of course, a dean of political science at Stetson University. Did I get that title right, David? 
Uh, I'm a professor of political science and associate dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Associate dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. And uh, David and I, of course, uh, know each other through the model Senate program that my wife and I endow. But David is a, as he said, a classically trained political science professor. So I wanted David to be part of the show to talk a little bit. David, tell, I guess let's start with the exciting news. Let's talk about the new polling center that Stetson's doing. We have, uh, at the behest of our new uh, president, President Chris Rolke, uh, he asked a simple question. Is it possible for us to, to get a polling center up at Stetson? We answered enthusiastically yes. Uh, we got a little um, funding uh, from two of our board trustees members to get things off the ground. Uh, it's called the Center for Public Opinion Research. Uh, headed by Dr. Stephen Smallpage and our, and our local science department polling expert. Um, and we just released our first poll, um, a very uh, limited poll on, on the race, the, the upcoming race um, or election um, in Florida. So we're, we're very excited. We're, we're going to get our, we're going to get into this market of, uh, of, of doing polling, academic polling. We're not doing it for money. We're not doing it for partisan reasons. Uh, we're doing it to contribute to uh, the national dialogue. And I think this is going to be a natural dovetail with Model Senate. I think that, you know, these things will go hand in hand and kind of promote each other. So uh, congratulations to the political science department. David, what are, what are your sense of what's going on in the state and in the country right now? Do you think it is going to be that sort of red tsunami that one of the earlier callers said, or do you think it's going to be something more moderate? Where do you see the country going? Well, yeah, and I've been, you know, kind of in, in some prep for today's show. We, we, you know, Florida's, Florida's pretty clear, at least on the two big races we have. DeSantis is 538, which is I go by uh, their, their estimate of all the polls. They have him with 55, uh, 43. Our real clear politics, 53, 42. Um, we have a, DeSantis winning by eight points in our new poll. So I think that's kind of a given. I don't, I don't think that's going to shock anybody. Rubio. Evans about the same. Uh, the the polls vary, but seven, eight, nine point win seems seems appropriate um, or, or a safe bet. So Florida's not. I don't see any surprises in our two big races. So Florida's staying um, staying red for the most part. And I've only got about thirty yeah. seconds here left in the show, David. So I got to wrap it up. And uh, okay, we really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show today. So thank you very much again, uh, Associate Dean and Professor of Political Science, Doctor David Hill. David, thank you so much. Thanks, Patrick. All Have right, a bye great bye. day. You too. All right, you listen to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm Attorney Patrick Smith. My Gators prediction for this week, uh, they'll field a team. I know that. Uh, I'll call it Gators 28, A&M 21. I'm not excited, but we'll see what happens. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. To reach us at the office, 877 754 Everyone stay safe. God bless. And go Gators.
The preceding was sponsored by the Law Offices of Patrick L. Smith. W-282-CI Tampa, W-271-CY Lakeland, W-262-CP Bayonet Point. Online at letstalkfaith.com. Or listen on TuneIn and Odyssey. It could have been us, but Hurricane Ian changed its path to southwest Florida. You've seen the pictures and video of the destruction of Hurricane Ian through Lee County, Sanibel Island, other hard-hit areas. Now, we can help them in their hour of need. Faith Talk Tampa joins Food for the Poor for emergency relief. Please go to letstalkfaith.com and give what you can right now. Or text the word TAMPA to 41444. The bigger your 401k, the better your retirement, right? Wrong. The fact is, with proposed new taxes, another market crash, inflation, and rising health care costs, you could be forced to downsize your retirement. Discover the secret savvy investors are turning to for retirement security. A new 401k law that unlocks an ingenious retirement protection plan that could protect your savings from inflation and a stock market downturn while boosting your retirement income as much as 40%. It's all laid out in simple language in a new book from Josh Melberg. His insightful guide is your roadmap to retiring with confidence and it's yours free with one call don't risk a lifetime of work building your retirement this little known retirement protection plan could safeguard your wealth and boost your retirement up to 40 percent for your free copy of guarantee your retirement by josh melberg call now call 800-337-8051 that's 800-337-8051 800-337-8051 I'm Adam Holtz, and you're listening to Plugged In on Faith Talk Tampa. Who are you? What are you doing in my dream? We are Wendell and Wild. Who? In the new animated movie Wendell and Wild, now streaming on Netflix, we meet 13-year-old Cat Elliot. She's an orphan attending a Catholic school. Turns out Cat's got a strange power, the ability to communicate with demons. Namely, two brothers named Wendell and Wild who would like to escape the underworld to sell some special hair cream that temporarily brings the dead back to life. Cat's not keen on helping demons, but she sure would like to see her parents again. There's some sweet moments in this PG-13 film, but dark spiritual content, violence, and language turn up too, as does a trans character. So we're giving Wendell and Wilde a 2 out of 5 for family friendliness. Read the full review at PluggedIn.com radio. I'm Adam Holtz for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. Well, everybody loves a good surprise, yeah. but you never see it coming from someone that you don't know, perhaps. This is Focus on the Family Minute with Pat Linnell. So, for instance, I can give you a birthday present, remember? 